Indian Society for Veterinary Surgery welcomes today's speaker and all the participants. As biomaterials originate from natural substances and are widely used in medicine, although they have to satisfy many conditions to be useful for treatment, more and more research is carried out with the new types of biomaterials that can help replace various tissues such as tendons and bones. Bone healing is based on the concept of tissue engineering is an emerging technique in regenerative medicine. Small and large animals are often affected by different types of trauma and wounds, which involve skeletal apparatus as well as the bone diseases. In main, many cases, a scaffold similar to bone is necessary to maintain the length and create a bridge for bone regeneration from one fragment to the another. With the aim to identify innovative biomaterials from abattoir to improve the healing process in course of traumatic or degenerative diseases, our today's webinar is on biomaterials from abattoir, lab to clinical ap applications to be presented by Naveen Kumar, Dr. Naveen Kumar from Izzat Nagar. Dr. Naveen Kumar is serving as a principal scientist in the Division of Surgery, Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Izzat Nagar. He pursued his graduation and post-graduation from the College of Veterinary Sciences, Bikaner, Rajasthan in the years 1984 and 1986 respectively. After his post-graduation, he joined as veterinary assistant surgeon in Rajasthan. Later on, he joined as IVRI in IVRI as scientist in the year 1989 and became principal scientist in 2006. He obtained his PhD degree from the Deemed University ICR IVRI Ijat Nagar, Uttar Pradesh. He is associated with more than 12 extramural projects and 10 institutional projects published more than 300 research and clinical articles on biomaterials, bioengineering and veterinary sciences, especially in veterinary surgery and radiology in national and international journals of review. He guided 12 PhD and 14 MBSc students till date and published 12 books and manuals, has contributed more than 40 chapters in different compendiums and books. He has also contributed 8 chapters to the books published by international publishers. He is also a recipient of several awards, which includes fellow from NADS, Ganga Ram Sharma Award, Srimati Ramani Ram Chandran Award and Best Paper Awards, presentation in various conferences and symposiums. He had been invited as a speaker in various international conferences held at Kathmandu, Nepal, Chengdu, China, Hong Kong, Singapore and many more countries and attended more than 30 national and international conferences. He has been the editorial board member of two international journals. In view of his significant expertise in biomaterials, I would like to request Dr. Naveen Kumar to deliver today's webinar on biomaterials from Abattoir Lab to Clinical Applications. Dr. Naveen Kumar, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you for the nice introduction. <clears throat> the topic is the development of biomaterial from abattoir waste, from lab to clinical applications. <clears throat> In this study, we describe the use of uh, abattoir waste after proper processing for the re reconstructive and regenerative surgery. So for this, I have prepared these lectures on the following topics or following contents. First uh, few slides about the Institute of IVRI. Then the biomaterial research facilities at IVRI. Then what is the need for development of biomaterials? And uh, definitions of biomaterials. Then how you process these abattoir waste and make them acellular, the method of decelleration. Uh, then the characterization of different biomaterials. Then the clinical evolution in different species of animals. Then the innate publications and the acknowledgement. So, <clears throat> as you all know, it is uh, around 250 kilometers from the Delhi. This is the IBRI. And uh, deemed university status is given and IVRI was established in year 
1889. So it is having more than 131 years of history, and it is having the six regional campus at different places: Pune, Palampur, Calcutta, then Bangalore, etc. And the IBRA is giving BBSc degree, MBSc degree, PhD degree, and also the uh, national diploma courses. In IBRA, around there are 300 scientists working in different disciplines, and around uh, uh, 700 students. So these are the some pictures of the IBRA. and this is the vice building where this our division of surgery and the, our bioengineering and biomaterials lab is uh, present and these are the uh, university building this is the hostel for the phd student uh, different disciplines and this is the laboratory facilities in our biomaterial and bioengineering lab and uh, we are having this uh, cell culture laboratory and the uh, operation theater facilities in the laboratory then this is the our clinics uh, referral polyclinic and tvcc where these uh, clinical applications were performed then question arises that what is the need for the development of biomaterials for the veterinary patients so in next few slide you can see the patients which we are coming at the our polyclinic like uh, having these burn wounds deep wounds which cannot be repaired without the use of this uh, biomaterials then these large hernia cases having large gap between the abdominal muscles so they require the use of biomaterial or scaffold to regenerate or to refresh the wounds then question arises what is the biomaterial so as per the dictionary biomaterial it is a noun and as per williams 1987 a material used in medical devices intended to interact with biological system is known as the biomaterial and then this uh, definition is further revised that by park 1995 a synthetic material used to replace part of a living system or function in intimate contact with the living tissue so he stress on the synthetic material but some biological material are also used to replace the part of uh, <coughs> living system so material used to construct the artificial organs rehabilitation devices prosthesis and replace the natural body tissues as per the american heritage medical dictionaries and another any foreign object that comes into the contact with the biological system is known as biomaterial a as per the european society for biomaterials a non viable material used in medical devices intended to interact with biological system then clemson university advisory board for biomaterials gave that a systematically and pharmacological inert substance <coughs> designed for implantation within incorporation with living system is known as the biomaterials but these all definitions are incomplete and uh, professor Williams, who is the editor of the Biomaterial Journal, he is the that gentleman, and I have opportunity to meet him at the Kathmandu conference. He is the Professor D. F. Williams, and he is the uh, Professor C. P. Sharma, who is the editor or president for the Society for Tissue Engineering and Regenerative Medicine India. Uh, this Professor Williams gave complete definition, like a biomaterial is. any substance that is other than drugs or combination of substances synthetic or natural in origin which can be used for any period of time as a whole or as a part of a system which treats 
augments or replaces any tissue organ or function of the body is biomaterial so this is this covers all the aspects of the biomaterials then what why we develop this acellular biomaterials uh, this uh, acellular when we prepared this bio, acellular biomaterials they have the, uh, the due to lack of autograft and allograft then the unmodified genografts which stimulate uh, immunological reactions and uh, these uh, acellular biomaterials have the natural three dimensional structure which is preserved and uh, having the recognition sites which are suitable for the adhesions of the host cells or seeding cells then method of decelerization how you decelerize the tissue native to remove the cells so there are two methods chemical method physical method and in chemical there are acid alkalis detergents and enzymes and in physical methods snap freezing mechanical force mechanical agitations all these can be used we develop these materials using the detergents ionic detergent non ionic detergent deuterioionic detergent and enzymes so <coughs> what is deceleration deceleration is the process of removing cells cells from the tissues so the tissue engineering and regenerative medicine involve the extensive use of these decelerized tissues and organs this removal of these cells from a tissue or organ leaves a complex mixture of structural and protein functional protein that constitute the extracellular matrix these extracellular matrix we have used for the reconstructive surgery without any immunological reactions so the goal is deceleration is to remove all the cellular and nuclear material while minimizing the adverse effect on the composition biological activity and mechanical integrity of the remaining ecm this is the main goal of the decelerization protocols you have to use judiciously the chemical reagents so that the integrity or mechanical integrity or the composition of the extracellular matrix cannot be compromise so most commonly utilized methods are the physical and chemical treatments physical and chemical combina treatment combination can be used for the decelerization of the tissues so how you start for decelerization first first step is uh, the lysis of the cell membrane using physical treatment or the ionic solutions you have to agitate these tissues in the distal water for 2 to 6 hours to remove the partial removal of the cells then treat with different uh, chemicals then different enzymes for the removing of the nuclear cellular components finally after decelerization remove all the cellular debris by repeated washing so this mechanical agitation continuous mechanical agitation will increase its effectiveness 
and following desulfurization also all the residual chemicals must also be removed so that there is no adverse host tissue reaction to the chemicals and the after desulfurization this hnd staining can be a first line of inspection to determine if the nuclear structures can be remaining or it has been removed or it is completely desolder so for every 12 hours or 24 hours you have to take the sample and then you have to stain to see whether the cell cell and nucleus are completely removed or not then the chemical used we can classify this ionic detergent you know sodium dodecyl sulfate and the sodium dioxycolate these are the two ionic detergent we have used for the preparation of this uh, acellular matrix then the non ionic detergent in this we use the tritron x100 and twin 20 then it is the jutri juter ionic detergent these ionic detergent having the qualities of both ionic and non ionic detergent that is the tributyl phosphate then we use this hypotonic and hypotonic solutions for this deceleration edta different enzymes pepsin trypsin dispase <coughs> endonucleases and nucleases deoxyribonucleases they are all used in combinations to remove the cells from the tissue so <clears throat> in our lab we optimize the protocols of these different uh, tissues from different species like buffalo goat pig sheep rabbit rat fish and almost all the epitar waste or all the tissues like pericardium diaphragm skin of different species bladder aorta gall bladder <coughs> rumen reticulum omasum intestine and swim bladder of fish we almost uh, standardized and developed the protocols for making these acellular materials from these uh, tissues then this is the a cellular matrix from the rabbit skin this is the normal rabbit skin this and this is the deepithelialized skin after removing the epithelium and this is the scanning microscopy picture of the uh, native skin and you can see after decelleration this is the extracellular matrix having good porosity which is clearly visible in the scanning microscope also this is the native scanning microscope and this is the a cellular <coughs> this has been published uh, by purohit at all 2016 another protocol we have also standardized for the rat skin this is the normal rat skin uh, showing cellularity this is the mason trichrome this is the normal rabbit skin by hnd stain and this is the scanning microscope picture showing this cellularity and the dense which you can appreciate that this became the acellular and a good porous scaffold and this is the hnd stain of the rat skin after deceleration another skin we have standardized the pig skin you can see this is a normal pig skin this is a epidermis and a, and this uh, after this is the epidermis we have removed by the uh, sodium chloride hypochlorite treatment and this is the dermis after deceleration and this is the <coughs> acellular dermis having good porosity all the cells removed and this is the scanning microscopic picture of the this has been published by proit et al 2016 and then there is the goat skin you can see this epidermis have been removed by treatment of this use of these chemicals and this is the acellular dermis 
and this is the normal goat skin and this is the acellular dermal graft prepared from the goat skin and this is the <coughs> acellular goat skin scanning microscope photographs another is the buffalo skin buffalo skin you can see this is the epidermis this is the acellular dermis these two are the uh, native histopathological sections and you can appreciate the acellularity dense uh, collagen fibers and in all these uh, scanning microscopy pictures you can see the different grade of porosity which is uh, uh, depends uh, how the this matrix behave when you applied in the different species of the animals this is the a cellular matrix developed from the bovine pericardium means buffalo coated pericardium this is the uh, normal pericardium this is the a cellular pericardium and this is the scanning microscope picture of the a cellular pericardium in this uh, we have used 4% sodium deoxycholate for 2 to 4 hours agitation continues followed by 2000 units of dns for 2 hours so this procedure resulted in the complete a cellular day by permit 2009 then the a cellular matrix from the this is the bovine skin bovine intestine this is the uh, a cellular preparation you, you can see the native intestine and this is the a cellular intestine you can see the decrease increase in the porosity and decrease in the uh, cellularity this is the we have prepared with this by the 1% sodium dodecol sulfate 1% sodium dodecol sulfate for only 12 hours as per sangeeta at all then another tissue which we have prepared is this is the native small intestine uh, this is the uh, mason trichrome stain and this is the hd stain you can see here the cellularity this is the a cellular yeah, high cellularity a cellular this is another matrix we have prepared from the bovine diaphragm native diaphragm buffalo diaphragm a cellular then the a cellular scanning microscope here we use 2% sodium dodecol sulfate for 48 hours continuous agitate in the 14 hour, 48 hours and every 12 hours we have to change the solution so that the debris and the cells can be removed and after 48 hours you can find the a cellular matrix complete a cellular matrix this is the buffalo arota you can see this native arota a cellular arota this is the a cellular arota here we use this uh, enzymes uh, by detergents combinations at different time intervals published in the their progress in biomedical international journal in 2014 and this is the amnion amnion is mostly a cellular but to, to reduce the antigenicity and few cellularity we have to deep freeze for minus 80 degree for 24 hours then it has been used as a wound uh, healing for the wound healing applications then the porcine urinary bladder you can see this is the porcine native bladder and this is the a cellular here we also use the ionic detergent that is sodium deoxycholate and the enzyme combinations as per devangan 2012 trends in biomedical artificial organ it has been published then the rumen this is the bovine rumen this is the histopathology you can see the thick uh, mucosa this is the uh, hnd staining and here you can see the a cellular rumen matrix which has been used for the repair of hernia in different species of animals here we use 
1% sodium dodecol sulfate continuous for 72 hours and replacing these solutions at every 12 hours interval. Then another matrix we have prepared the bovine reticulum. This is the reticulum honeycomb structure. This is the H and D stain native. This is the acellular reticulum. Here it is the SEM picture of native acellular and this is the acellular bovine reticulum by mesentrichrome stain. Here we used 0.5% sodium deoxyclate for to continuous 48 hours. Then another is the omism. For this uh, lamellae, omism lamellae, we have to, after 12 hours, you can easily remove the uh, epithelium. Then this is the acellular matrix which we have prepared by the 5.5% sodium deoxyglate continuous agitation at 48 hours. This is the uh, native omism and this is, you can see beautiful scaffold in H and D stain and uh, H, this is the mesentrichrome stain, complete acellularity. Then another is the different species, caprine, goat rumen. This is the native rumen and this is, it is having very good tensile strength and it has been used as a material for the repair of the hernia. This is the acellular matrix. We prepared by 1% sodium dodecol sulfate for 48 hours. Continuous agitation at 48 hours. Then the how to prepare this uh, acellular matrix from the bovine gall bladder. This bovine gall bladder collected then fundus and neck has been cut and slit in a longitudinal strip. The mucosa after eight hours, we can easily peel by mechanical agitation and by uh, detergent. You can prepare this acellular gallbladder matrix. And you can see this is the native gallbladder. This is the native mesentrichrome stain and this is the H and D stain, uh, scanning microscope study. And this is the acellular matrix of gallbladder. You can see here this all collagen fibers and this is the porosity. And uh, for this, we have used 0.5% sodium dodecol sulfate for 48 hours. And here also you can see the DNA contents after uh, different time intervals, 48 hours, you can, it, is, it has been minimized. Here also you can see the, this is the Pig gallbladder, this is the native and this is the acellular matrix. You can see very good porosity in the pig. And here also, pig gallbladder also shows the decrease in the DNA contents. Here we use the 0.5% sodium dodecol sulfate for 48 hours. And this is the another different species, fish swim bladder. <coughs> this has been prepared by the 0.5% sodium deoxyclate for only 24 hours. You can find this good and these, these are the uh, native fish swim bladder. This is the acellular, acellular fish swim bladder as a good dressing material for the wounds. And here you can see the different uh, mm, organs of different uh, different tissues of different species and having the different type of porosity and collagen fiber arrangement. Then what, how will you evaluate the decellularized scaffold? So we have used different st steps for after preparation of decellularized scaffolds. First is the histopathological examination. In, we use the H and D staining, mesentrichrome staining, DEPI staining to confirm the acellular day. Then we run the SDS page, FTIR spectroscopy, then the DNA content analysis. And after these, you can do the cell culture studies 
to see whether they are any toxicity or not then pre clinical studies in the laboratory animals and then after you have to go for the clinical trials so in this uh, lecture i have uh, reduced the uh, this uh, delete the uh, this uh, step 5 and step 6 and after dna contaminations and this because it will become too large so we show the clinical trials this is the hnd staining you can see the cellularity and after decelleration the <coughs> tissue become a cellular so it is ready to used in the clinical cases then the mesenteric stain this is the cellularity and this is you can see very good uh, picture of having collagen scaffold so these these parameters are used to evaluate the uh, decelerized materials then the tabby staining you can see the nuclear staining and after a cellular no nuclear bodies have been seen and this is the sds phase at different time intervals you know 12 hours 14 hours 12 24 48 and after becoming a cellular you can see the reduce in the uh, nuclear contents and the protein and this you can not find the different bands as well as the ftir studies you can find the different uh, protein bands reduce in different protein bands and uh, dna contents analysis you can see that the, after this is the in the dna contents in the native or retreated and after decelerized you can see that the significant reduce in the dna contents <coughs> then come to the clinical application of these different uh, materials so on the basis of the selection is basis on the basis of the tensile strength so we have selected few materials which are having the good tensile strength for the repair of the abdominal wall defects or large hernias so first is the this is the arota a cellular arota having good tensile strength and it has been used in more than 100 clinical cases uh, we can show you some of the like this is the goat male goat having large umbilical hernia and this is applied this a cellular aerotic matrix has been applied as a inlay graft as a inlay to the hernial ring then in a cross bred buffalo calf this is the pre we can apply the pre placed suture and we can tie one by one this is the a cellular aerotic matrix published in 2012 in veterinary record this is after 6 months showing normal contour of the abdominal wall then the large inguinal hernia having large inguinal ring this operated and the a cellular matrix has been applied to close this ring and after day 3 and after day 30 more than 10 cases of this uh, equines has been used for the repair of this hernias and this has been published in the equine veterinary education 2013 then umbilical hernia in the buffalo calf buffalo calf we have used this uh, a cellular aerotic matrix for the preparation of this uh, uh, umbilical reduction of the umbilical hernia and this is another case you can see aerotic matrix apply in the veterinary practitioner ablation veterinary practitioner large hernia around 12 to 12 cm in diameter ring is then another case is this is has been published in the australian veterinary journals we have used this uh, more than 12 cases for the repair of this umbilical hernias by using the uh, a cellular aerotic matrix uh, published by vinit et al 2013 then another good material is the diaphragm a cellular diaphragm of the bovine origin here 
we use this bowen diaphragm in a pig to repair the large umbilical hernia this is after 30 days you can see good healing uh, published in veterinary archives so i am showing only one or two cases of a series of the clinical trials we have done it is in eight clinical eight clinical cases of pig another is the large ventrolateral hernia in a kid here this is around 10 to 12 cm in diameter this and this is around 30 days published in sh journal of veterinary science 2019 this is also a good diaphragm is also proved to be a good biomaterial for the then another is the large perineal hernia this has been repaired with the use of the diaphragm a cellular diaphragm matrix indian journal of canine practice after 15 days no hernial swelling another is the ruminant signs this is a large hernia a cellular diaphragm matrix cut in the desired shape and applied the dermal matrix from the dermis or skin of the different species like in a, this we use this repair of the ventrolateral hernia in a buffalo published in veterinary archives 2014 it is a very large hernia around 15 cm in diameter this is you can see after 30 days good contours this is after 3 days of operation then large ventrolateral hernia in a equine is also a large we use the a cellular dermal matrix to repair this published in journal of equine veterinary science here we used five equine cases for the hernia repair then the large perineal hernia you can see here we use this a cellular dermal matrix for the repair of this one month post operatively you can see and this is published in the proceedings of national academy of sciences biological sciences this is a large ventrolateral hernia in a dog published in journal of equine veterinary science this is large ring you can see after this is the pre operative post operative two months good healing then a congenital absence of the abdominal wall muscles this is the day old and we have used this a cellular dermal matrix with good results for the repair of this congenital abdominal wall defect then another case of large hernia we use this a cellular dermal matrix for the repair of the large perineal hernia in a dog another is the in a large ventral hernia you can see here this is the radiograph showing the contents and we use this dermal matrix to repair this ventral hernia then the uh, we use this goat roman matrix also for the repair of this hernia like umbilical hernia in a kid large this is the after 15 days then the, in a cow calf this caprine roman has been used for the repair of this large hernia then in a kid caprine roman has been used this is after 30 days as a journal of animal science 2019 published then the large lateral hernia in a cow we use this caprine roman lateral hernia we use this caprine roman after 30 days post operatively then bubline buffalo roman matrix we have also used in a this is the 
dog and cattle this is published in international fauna journal of fauna and biological studies with good results then the another uh, this uh, bovine rumen matrix has been used in the nine cases of different species uh, with good results then this is small intestines and mucosa which we have prepared they have been used for the uh, corneal injuries this is day 0 and this is day 90 clarity of the cornea and uh, the acellular amnion has been used you can see the day 0 and the application of this amnion this is a clear visibility after day 90 so these are the certain biomaterials which we have tested and applied in more than 500 clinical cases at ivri then these are the some publications regarding more than 35 clinical cases has been published this is in the uh, veterinary record this is uh, australian applied animal research applied animal research this is the australian veterinary journal equine veterinary educations then more than 115 uh, this case uh, this biomaterials publications in the various international journals uh, like uh, from the elsewhere you can see the different aspects of the biomaterial research then some of the uh, materials published in the newspapers local then we have you we i have written two chapters for the uh, handbook of tissue engineering is scaffold uh, edited by this anthony atala he is a international renowned biomaterialist from the usa scaffold for bladder tissue engineering and scaffold for abdominal wall, wall reconstruction all the chapters has been written based on our experience at our at our ivr and other institutes different institutes also so this is all about uh, the development of biomaterials and the clinical applications so besides uh, doing this research work clinical applications i have show you some my two hobbies one is the philately postage collections this is the uh, pre independence tickets uh, having half ana 1y4 ana and this is the one naya paisa two naya paisa and this is the and uh, beside this uh, postage collections i have a hobby to draw the things and this is the some of my paintings you can see and appreciate then i would like to acknowledge my colleagues dr sharma samir which uh, give uh, last 50 years they are associating with this and all the students who have done my uh, mbsc and phd work on the biomaterials and <clears throat> i will like to acknowledge the department of biotechnology who give around 1.5 crores of financial support to develop this uh, lab and to run these two three projects then thanks to dr simran sagar president iisvs deepak patel executive secretary all the executive members of iisvs uh, for the intas team dr nitin bhatia and all uh, his colleagues then dr ashok kumar professor and head from isar and the deepak tiwari divesh nilesh sandhu and no uh, navjot amal jot uh, for organizing this nice webinar so thank you thank you very much sir which biomaterials are found to be the best for umbilical hernia or hernioplasty umbilical hernioplasty first uh, i will give the aorta then the diaphragm that is the tendinous part of the diaphragm these two materials they are very good having very good tensile strength 
and very good. We have used around more than 100 cases of these two materials, clinical trials. These, these are the good materials. Whereas the other materials like uh, skin, uh, this uh, amnion and uh, uh, this fish or they, they are better for the wound, superficial or deep, deep wound healing where no tensile strength is required. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mm, uh, thank you. Mm. Sir, any biological membrane which can be used for suture material? No, no, no. no. We, we have not used as a suture material, but uh, some institute they have developed from the fish, fish intestine as a fish gut, uh, fish um, this uh, suture material. We, we have used in uh, one experimental studies from Kochi, we have procured that uh, fish gut. And uh, it is also give equivalent uh, uh, results as well as the cat gut with the very low immunogenicity. Right, sir. Yeah. Sir, which, which are the biological materials that you have used for uh, any of the eye surgeries? Eye surgery, we have used this the cornea from the slaughterhouse at itself, then the amnion and the a small intestine, some mucosa. Uh, they, our group, uh, one group, Dr. Krenji and his team, they are working and they have tried in more than 30, 40 cases for the corneal opacity, corneal wounds, these, these two, three materials. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the session. We are highly thankful for you, to you for being there and for uh, giving us a nice presentation. I, on behalf of ISVS, uh, thank our president, sir, Simrat Sagar, sir, Dr. Patel, and the entire group who has been working for making these webinars a great success. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.